and welcome to this session uh, in which we'll be dealing with the trauma topic and the topic for today will be far cortical locking so before we start uh, how many of you have heard about far cortical locking now can you just uh, raise the hand or put it in the chat box that is because yes this was asked as a question in dnb now this was way back in 2016 when it was asked but uh, i was just going through a few papers which a uh, few of our students had sent and it was asked in rajiv gandhi university last year and apparently this year in kerala university so uh, that's what the doc nofel told me and uh, i thought maybe since it's been so oftenly asked it's time we cover that so that our students do not find something out of the blue when they give the exams okay so this far cortical locking through concept has two aspects one is theoretical aspect that we need to know which will be useful if they ask you a exam question either in theory or during practicals or whatever and the practical aspect as a surgeon if you want to use this okay so once you once you are done with your exams and you are treating the patients on your own how to use this effectively if at all okay so those two things keep it apart from each other okay because there are some conflicting uh, evidences there we will go through that and see uh, what best we can infer from, from that okay the bad part about it's being asked in exam was uh, something like this now if i if i may ask the students uh, if a question is asked like this write a short note or a long note on whatever this is biogaran how many of you will be able to write do does anyone know what this is i presume no right so you will not be able to write but if i tell you that it is nothing but paracetamol or if they ask a question on dolo 650 i am pretty sure all of you would have written that now why i am telling this is because in dnb unfortunately when they asked the question they did not ask for particular locking they asked the trademark the trade name of the particular company zimmer in this particular uh, uh, context it was on motion lock screw and this question was asked okay so uh, almost all the students who gave the exam that year had no clue what this is if they had asked for particular locking yes it was discussed to some extent um in at different conferences or even even in uh, uh, recent advanced stocks but motion lock per se because we we tend not to take trade names when we when we discuss things even in conferences right we stick to standard things like cephalomedullar nail or whatever we don't take the trade names so unfortunately this was asked in its trade name thing which uh, definitely should not be what it is right even in pharmacology when they ask the questions in orthopedics they ask you the chemical name they don't ask us the trade name that's how it should be right it should be universal fine anyway so for those of you uh, i mean this question might come repeat they might ask us motion locks for next time so be aware that it is nothing but far cortical locking through concept okay so if you go uh, and read the history of plate osseous this uh, plates were there even before that that has been well covered in our plate osteosynthesis talk but uh, the most commonly used plates in the recent past were dcp the dynamic compression plate the lcd cp the limited contact dynamic compression plate and then came the lcp now lcp came at or around say uh, the turn of the century so around that aspect when lcp came into the market and then anatomical plates came which are once again lcps but anatomically uh, matched the uh, the the dimensions of the bone okay but these are all lcps and most of the surgeons were started using lcps uh, uh, giving especially for periarticular and articular fractures and we're getting uh, pretty good results because we were following the four principles that is good reductions stable fixations early mobilization and most importantly preservation of blood supply all this we could do with an lcp because lcp does not need to get uh, go and sit on the bone surface so even with a mepo percutaneous approaches we could do it and get pretty good results with the use of this right so things were going pretty smooth when this particular paper came about in 2010 this was in the journal of orthopedic trauma telling that lock plating especially in distal femur fractures give inconsistent and asymmetric callus formation okay they quoted the significant uh, number of studies uh, done by themselves and elsewhere and they gave us examples telling how in few of the cases uh, the the callus is pretty good but in few of the other cases the callus is not as uh, one would expect and this is beyond the control of the surgeon that means uh, when i do a case when i uh, treat a patient with a distal femur plate locking plate i cannot anticipate whether there will be enough callus at the end of 3 months 4 months or whatsoever whatever i'm anticipating in that particular patient so i can't predict that so it is beyond my control that is what this particular paper told us right and it told us that uh, 
they, yeah, basically they told us that it is too stiff. The distal femur plates. Now this study was done only with regards to distal femur fractures. They told us that this particular plate in this situation is very stiff. And of course, titanium plate is slightly better than stainless steel. We all knew about that due to our biomaterials uh, knowledge and that we need to use a larger plate. But then still it is inconsistent, number one. Number two is asymmetric. Asymmetric means now if you consider the near cortex and the far cortex, the far cortex will have enough callus, but the near cortex that is just underneath the plate, the callus is not enough. Now, this was actually very, very astonishing because uh, we were all of the opinion that LCP staying away from the bone does not impede the periosteal blood supply. So, uh, the near cortex periosteum should not be hampered. So, the vascularity should be okay. So, callus should form all right. But then the studies were telling something different. Now, once again, in 2011, one more, one more article came with a very uh, significant headlines like telling that is there... Uh, it was same in general orthopedic journal of orthopedic trauma where they showed enough cases telling that there is, it is inconsistent can lead on to non-unions and failure so much so it was even propagated as a non-union machine that distal femur plating with an lcp is something like a non-union machine 